So as an eye doctor, I, get, I work with a lot of old people and um, uh, it's lovely because you get to see a positive side of ageing because many of the people I see having their cataracts out is the first time they've been in hospital and had an operation since they were born. It's incredible really. And we live in the country in the farming community and I see a lot of farmers who are still very fit and active into well into their 80s, which is amazing. So ageing isn't, you know, what we are led to believe. Ageing doesn't mean you have to get uh, sick and old before you die. You can just you know, live and then drop dead. It's lovely. But one thing I see as a real pro well, I see I see a few things as being problematic in medicine. One is the the escalating cost of medicine, and we just literally cannot afford the healthcare system that we've created. And this is to large to a large degree because we are refusing to deal with the root cause of the problem, which is the way we're living life. Lifestyle diseases have been shown to be responsible for the vast majority, if not all, of chronic diseases and probably a lot of acute ones as well. But yet you, we are refusing to deal with this in a systematic way. We're pouring billions of dollars into high-tech drugs, high-tech surgery, high-tech research. But we're not putting any money in to preventative health care in a way that's going to truly make a difference you know, to counter the massive amounts of money that's put into advertising junk food and alcohol and cigarettes and all the things that make us sick. We have to make an investment in promoting healthy lifestyle in a way that's actually attractive to people, in a way that makes sense to them and makes them see that this is actually something they would want to do. Because a lot of people literally do not know what healthy food is. I've heard apocryphal stories of um, doctors asking their um, young mothers to give the child some orange juice because the, the child's malnourished. And then they've seen the woman and her child in the street and the child's sucking on a bottle of Fanta. I mean, some people literally don't know what is actually good for them. And this is because we have been remiss in our education of people. And this is something I dearly love to work on. The other topic that's very challenging for people is end of life because people are staying alive for so long now and they're staying alive with multiple diseases that we used to not be able to keep people alive for but we've become so good at keeping people alive that it's gotten to the point where once you step your foot in the door of hospital you're not allowed to die anymore and this is creating enormous problems for us because it's very expensive to keep old people with multiple illnesses alive. But what do you do, you know? And these are the issues that are very hard to address and need to be addressed with great sensitivity and care. But they're issues that we're really not addressing, we're just keeping people alive because we don't want to deal with the issues. This is not sustainable. It's not even something those people usually want. Some people are horrified, you know, when they've asked to be left to die at home. But then at the last minute someone's called the ambulance and, and the patient wakes up in intensive care in hospital going, what am I doing here? <laughs> I thought I would be dead by now. And so these are issues that I feel it's so important for us to address, but to address them with love and care for everyone concerned, the doctors, the patients and the families alike.